Am I the asshole for refusing to be the designated driver? Getting upset over my boyfriend mocking my body? Slapping my husband? Yes. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sam, otherwise known as Sneerix. Sorry about the little mini break that I took there in putting out videos. I actually was just celebrating my birthday and I just wanted to take a little mini vacation. So thank you to everybody that sent me really sweet birthday messages. It just made my heart so, so happy. I thought it might be fun to switch it up a little bit and play a little game of the classic Am I the asshole? I feel like I'm a pretty good critic and, and I can give some pretty good neutral feedback. So I pulled a couple scenarios from Reddit that we're gonna read here. First one, would I be the asshole if I broke up with my girl because she thinks Wi-Fi causes cancer? <laughs> so I, 26 male, have been dating this girl who I'll call Emily, 26 female, for the last year. Emily is a very nice person, however, she isn't always the smartest. She is into a lot of pseudoscience and I once had to talk her out of going to the store to buy gift cards to pay her brother's bail. Which is a common scam where we live that usually only old people fall for. You know what? It happens. Shit happens. Lately, whenever she has come over to my apartment, she would complain about headaches. Girl, I hear you. Conveniently, these headaches started when I bought a new router that has bigger and more visible antennas. Oh no. About a month after this, she told me she was electromagnetic hypersensitive and wants me to get rid of my router. I was completely dumbfounded by this as she has a router at her apartment she never complains about. <laughs> at this point, I think I just want to stop wasting my time and find a woman who is a little less ridiculous. But my friends are split with a lot of them saying this is a pathetic reason to break up with someone and my mom agrees. So would I be the asshole to break up with her over this? <laughs> Immediately, I think of Jillian from Family Guy. This is giving me <laughs> Jillian vibes. That's okay. We love the Jillians of our world, okay? Did they say how long they've been dating for the last year? Okay, so it's been a year. This is kind of a decent amount of time that you guys have been together. It's not like it was only three months or something, which I'm wondering why after a year is this now bothering you? Like, is this just like been building up and you're just like, okay, I've heard one too many things that now I'm kind of just like over it. Because if somebody was really this like unaware of their surroundings, you'd think you'd notice that like within the first few months. Who knows? You know, I think if you're in a situation where you're even considering or have that thought kind of going on in your mind where you're like, this is enough for me to even consider this, I'm always of the mindset of if you're not happy or if you are thinking about hooking up with other people, either be honest about it and have a conversation and see if that can be salvaged or figured out or just break up. Grow up and break up. I like that. Even if you feel like an asshole for it, I mean, it's better to do it than to just string somebody along or just to be in a relationship that you're unhappy with, which comes with resentment. Um, infidelity, a lot of things that could be avoided if you just are honest. With that being said, I'm not really sure how you would address this either. That's kind of the problem with this particular situation. This isn't something that you can really like talk through. If it comes to somebody's intelligence or like I said, awareness, you can't really have an intervention. What are you supposed to tell somebody to go back to school? I don't think you'd be an asshole for breaking up with somebody for any reason. It's more about the way you do it would constitute whether or not you're an asshole in this situation because that's kind of a hard conversation and you're gonna have to either be really honest, which is, could be kind of mean or you're gonna have to lie, <laughs> which is also kind of shitty, but we have to reevaluate when it comes to how you plan to do it, which I'm not gonna help you with that. I have no advice. I'm officially out when it comes to that particular topic and hopefully it'll stay that way. <laughs> Next one. Am I the asshole for slapping my husband? Yes. After he confessed to cheating on me. Okay, I spoke too soon. <laughs> I, a 24-year-old female, came home after a long day at work. My husband, 32 male, had made dinner for us, which he rarely does. After dinner, he even cleaned up and did the dishes. I was surprised since this isn't something he usually does without me having to ask. Girl, that's a whole thing in itself. Move on. I jokingly asked if something was up and he hesitated before answering. He confessed to cheating on me with a coworker. I was completely shocked. It felt like my world shattered into a million pieces. I asked him how long it had been going on. He said it had been a couple months. Oh. They've been seeing each other on and off. And as if things couldn't get any worse, he added that she might be pregnant. Okay, the slap is starting to sound a little bit more justified. I think I'm switching sides. That's when I lost it. My whole world was spinning and I suddenly felt this rage come over me. I slapped him across the face and called him every name in the book. I told him to take his stuff and get out. Fair, <laughs> valid. Kick his ass to the curb. His mother's been blowing up my phone, asking me to talk things out with her son, telling me how wrong it was for me to slap him and how heartbroken her son is over the situation. Oh, poor baby. So if he didn't cause it. I haven't responded yet since I haven't been able to gather my thoughts yet. 
yet. This whole situation just feels surreal to me. I can't believe the man I plan to spend the rest of my life with betrayed me like this. Was I wrong for how I reacted? I usually am on the side of never putting your hands on anybody and I still stand by that, absolutely. But I can understand why somebody would get to that level. Obviously, if it was the other way around and this was a man telling the story, I think I would have a little bit of a harder time defending it. So I do want to at least acknowledge that. Let's just break down little bits of this and then maybe I can come to a decision here. Number one, obviously, is the fact that this man doesn't cook dinner or clean up. And granted, everybody's household is different. So if that is an understanding between the two people in the house and that's what works for them, like, cool, no problem, no judgment, nothing. Just based on the way this was described, it sounds like maybe that's not necessarily the case. That just might be how the roles ended up happening. So I'm already kind of feeling ick about that. And then we get to the actual confession here, which good for you for saying something because there's plenty of people out there that aren't gonna say anything and would continue denying it even if they, you know, were called out. <laughs> Props to him, I guess. But but also like, don't go to your mom and cry and be like, oh, she won't take me back after I fucked somebody else for months. That's the thing too I wanted to address. Months. It's not like this was a one time at thing. Like, oh, I was really drunk and blah, blah, blah. Like even then I wouldn't really feel like that was an excuse, but at least it's like, okay, you made one stupid mistake. I don't know how I'd react to that. I'm not not gonna sit here and pretend like I'd be that calm about it, but this has been happening and happening on and off, as he stated. So this wasn't a, oops, I accidentally fucked you. This was a, I liked it and I'm gonna do it again and again. And oh, I might feel guilty about it. So we're gonna be off for a month, but then I'm gonna do it again. And that just goes back to what I said before, where it's like, just break the fuck up, but we have to have our cake and eat it too, right? Ideally in that situation, I would not want to support the slapping of somebody else. But out of all the things to do to somebody, I guess that's the least damaging. I don't know, maybe somebody has a serious backhand. There are the j Rows of the world out there. The whole thing with the mother or the parent, get the fuck off my phone. Don't text me about your son. <laughs> Anytime a parent is involved in texting a significant other regarding the relationship, not like, oh, you know, can I see my grandkids? Or would you guys like to get dinner? Like, obviously that's normal. I'm talking about if you guys break up and somebody's mother is reaching out to you, either cussing you out because you hurt their child or groveling with their child for you to take them back. It's like, you don't want him in your house. I don't want him either. So to answer your question, I'm not gonna say that you were wrong because I mean, he was wrong. It was not the best option, but I'm not gonna fault you for it because this is a lot. And I think the fact that all he got was a slap in the face and a kick to the curb is lucky on his part, right? Ick. <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my friend I no longer hang out at her house because her dad is creepy? Oh no. We're both in our early 20s females and met in college. She lives with her dad and he regularly works from home. She's been inviting a bunch of her girlfriends over recently and at first I was having a good time. However, her dad started to act creepy. Examples are staring a lot, forcing awkward conversations, asking weird questions when no one is around. I've privately talked with my friends and they all said this wasn't happening to them. Well, over the last couple weeks, my friend has been bugging me and asking why I no longer turn up. At first I was gonna spare her, but she was insistent in making up reasons. For example, she thought I was being shady, thought I no longer liked her. Finally, I was fed up and I told her the truth. She got very, very mad and accused me of lying. She said her dad would never be that creepy and that I am attention seeking. Ooh, we had a massive argument and now she's telling everyone that I'm a lying <laughs> awful bitch. Am I the asshole? I mean, just to break it down and get to the actual basics of this, if you feel uncomfortable around somebody and your gut or instincts are telling you to stay away from this person. I'm not gonna consider that a toxic or asshole move. The dynamic of someone's father kind of getting you when you're alone, saying creepy things, which unfortunately we don't have examples of that. So, you know, everybody's interpretation of what's creepy and what they feel is appropriate is different. This kind of sucks because your friend is caught in the middle here. And obviously somebody saying that your dad is creepy or saying or doing creepy things is going to trigger some sort of defense. <laughs> I mean, this is her dad. And I'm not saying that this is untrue or that, you know, this person shouldn't have been honest. The friend was already kind of upset and getting frustrated because this person hadn't been coming to the house in a while. So I don't know. If, if you're already feeling isolated, something's not right, it's better to be safe than sorry. And unfortunately, if a friend can't,
can't understand that or respect that, that's not your fault. You know, to answer the question, no, I don't believe that you're the asshole. I don't really think anybody is the asshole in the situation besides the dad. That's just, that really is a shitty situation and probably a ruined relationship because of somebody that isn't going to have any consequence for their behavior in all of this, so. Am I the asshole for refusing to be the designated driver because I'm the only one that has a car? Oh, okay. This seems like a minor thing to most, but it has been eating at me and I'm seriously considering ditching this friend group for this. Oh, here we go. Whenever my friends and I, all in our early 30s, go out to a place that is slightly out of the way of public transportation, it's the expectation that I'm automatically the driver because they all live in the city and none of them have cars, okay? They do contribute to gas and parking money and they do say thanks, but I'm sick of never being able to have a drink and let loose. Oh, I suggested a couple of times that we take a taxi or an Uber so everyone can have fun, but that is shot down because they think it's too expensive. Last time I went out with a couple and they both sat in the back like I'm a freaking taxi, I didn't even know what to say because I was just stunned by this. I don't know if this is common or not, but I found it incredibly rude. And that was the final drop that is making me consider dropping this entire group. Admittedly, they are a fun bunch to hang out with, but I feel like I'm only included for being the handy friend that they can rely on getting them places instead of them actually liking me. So am I overly sensitive or are my friends just kind of meh and I'm better of spending my time elsewhere? Having a car when nobody else has a car is definitely both a cool thing and a really shitty thing because of this exact reason. As somebody with the car, you have all the power. That also means that you might get stuck being the DD. But it shouldn't be every time. I absolutely agree. Unfortunately, it's not really a situation where everybody can take turns driving unless, of course, you're okay with somebody else driving your car and you can drink that night or to just all split it all the time. I mean, if you feel like it's too expensive to take an Uber and your only option is to keep putting this same friend out, forcing them into this role that they're gonna cart you around and drive your drunk ass home and you're gonna have a splendid, fantastic time while the DD has to just sit there and watch. Usually that's only the case if somebody is sober or they don't drink for whatever reason <laughs> and they're cool with being the DD because they're not gonna drink anyway. I can understand maybe a bunch of like 21 year olds who are just literally like, we just wanna drink and we're in college and we're not really thinking, you know, we don't have a car or whatever. It's not really like that. Like you guys are, you're adults. If going out is too expensive, then you don't get to go out. You know, don't get as many drinks if the car ride there is too expensive. Like save your money for the car there and back. Or like, can we not go to a bar? Can we just get food and no one drinks so everybody can like walk or like figure it out? I don't know. Not fair and annoying. You are not the asshole, especially because you have said something. Why would I keep going out with you when I can't drink? <laughs> What's the point? This doesn't have to be happening. <laughs> if they can't be respectful to you, I'd walk. And maybe they'll take you seriously because they're gonna be shit out of luck when they don't have a car or they're gonna have to find a new friend that has a car. They'll just replace you and then you'll know for sure that you were just their car friend. Am I the asshole for not letting a woman with an empty stroller use the elevator before me? No. Oh. My God. My partner is a severe people pleaser, same, and goes out of his way to let people go ahead of us all the time. To him, everything revolves around the comfort of everyone surrounding him in public. I could not relate to those words more. I don't push or force my turn in anything, yet sometimes I'm made to feel bad for taking the turn I've properly waited for. Yesterday, we were on the fifth floor of a store. Wanting to go down faster, we took the elevator. I pressed the button and we waited alone for about two minutes before a lady with an empty stroller started queuing with us. A few minutes minutes later, the small elevator arrives. It fits about five people comfortably and arrives with three girls already in it. I step in knowing only both of us will fit and my partner calls my name asking if we shouldn't let the lady go first. She did not ask him. He just came up with it on his own. I bluntly said to him, no, we were here first. He then steps in and I ask him what would happen if we let her go and then another lady or man showed up with a stroller. The stroller was empty and the only way I'd let her go first would be if his kid was screaming inside the stroller. Like I said, a huge people pleaser. I am also very weird about taking my turn or being in a spot in line and not getting cut because I don't like feeling walked on. The difference here is I want to make you feel comfortable and make you feel happy and make everybody around me feel like they don't have to pick up a damn thing off the floor. But if I feel like you are actively trying to take advantage of me, then I get a little defensive and that's when I'll actually like put my foot down. In a situation like this, I am 100% on the writer's side. I think it's 
it's very nice for somebody to offer your spot in the elevator. They made a good point in saying, well, what happens if, you know, more people keep coming up? Are you just gonna keep letting people go in front of us? At some point, you have to be a little bit assertive and stand up for yourself and just know that you have to take your turn. Like, you don't need to wait for somebody's permission or to make sure everybody in the room is okay with it. You know, especially because the woman didn't even say anything. If this person was making a big stink about it, I would definitely put my foot down and be like, you can fuck all the way off. I think if I was with the stroller, I'd be like, oh, no, 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 like, you're good. I'll just wait for the next one. I really don't want to cram into that elevator. I would much rather take the next one and hopefully be alone. I would also be kind of pissed too if I had already gotten in the elevator and my significant other tried to like tell me to come out as if I did something wrong because I really don't like being wrong. I've made a decision here. Like we're kind of a team, right? Like if I go, you go. You jump, I jump, right? It's just being nice to the point where it's now kind of fucking you over. I don't think that you're an asshole at all for not letting a woman that came up behind you with an empty stroller jump in front of you for literally no reason. No. Am I the asshole for getting upset over my boyfriend mocking my body? Do we even have to read this one? I, a 23 year old female, recently lost some weight, which also resulted in a decrease to my breast size. While cuddling with my boyfriend, a 21 year old male, he made a comment that my boobs now look like those of an overweight 13 year old boy. Do we need to continue? I know he meant it as teasing and didn't intend to hurt me, but it still impacted my confidence. Am I the asshole for getting upset over his comment or should I just brush it off as harmless banter? Edit. We do tease each other on a daily basis, but I never commented on his physical appearance and always reassured him about whatever he could be self-conscious about. On the other hand, he did say some mean stuff about my physical appearance as a joke that I didn't really appreciate. But then again, I know he doesn't even realize how bad they are. When he made that remark, I sulked to the side and told him that was a mean thing to say. He didn't understand that it could really hurt me and just try to make me feel better without apologizing for it, which he did now after seeing some of the comments. Okay, you're stupid. Why would you say that? to anybody, especially somebody that you are dating, that you supposedly love and care for and are attracted to. That's so frustrating. That makes me so angry because I, along with many other people, <laughs> have many insecurities. And when somebody comments on your body, um, especially being young, they said they're 23, 21. I, I would still consider that pretty young. That hits hard. If you're somebody that's resilient and has tough skin and you're like, bitch, I know I'm good looking and whatever you say about me is obviously a projection of your own insecurities, good for you. And I strive to be like you one day. But until then, it hurts and it feels like shit when it comes from somebody that you think is attracted to you. And this is a situation where somebody just lost a bunch of weight. So to compare somebody's body to an overweight child, that seems like a slap in the face. That seems like you still see me in a way that I've worked really hard to change. I feel like I could go a million different directions with that and be like, I mean, are you attracted to 13 year old boys then? Because you're the one that seems to be into me. Oh, do we want to twist this that direction? Like, come on. And you know what? Sometimes people just say really stupid things and you're going at each other and maybe somebody says something a little too far. So you say something a little too far. They said that they, you know, banter and that's fine. You know, there's playful banter and then there's crossing a line. And obviously he crossed a line, but it says he didn't apologize until after he saw comments. So obviously he didn't agree enough with her to feel like he needed to apologize until other people wrote it out for him or explained it to him. Or there was enough people on her side that he felt like he was like, shit, I'm wrong which I am glad he eventually came around and apologized. But you'd think if somebody in that moment got really upset, you'd be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Obviously I took it too far. My bad, I'll never say anything like that. Again, that is just not cool. No, I don't think you're the asshole. <laughs> and I don't think you would be the asshole regardless of what he said about your body. If it makes you upset, if it hurts you, obviously make that known because if somebody doesn't know they're hurting you and they think that you're just laughing it off, you know, you're unbothered by it. They're gonna think, you know, you thought that was funny. It can't stop unless you you communicate that it needs to stop. And there are some people out there that need to have their hand held and kind of walked through emotions and lessons like words hurt, don't comment on anybody else's body, you know, just the basics. Sometimes that just goes right over someone's head and we have people like this. It kind of depends on how you handle the aftermath of that that I think would determine if this was really a problem or not. Because if you sit there and say, I'm sorry, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to say that to you. And then you say it again, bitch, no, you clearly aren't sorry and you clearly don't get it. And now you're just saying hurtful things because you know now that it hurts me and you're saying it again. I'm just gonna say this. If you are with somebody that has made you feel some type of way about your body that is anything other than positive and loving, out the door they go, up the chimney, through, the fucking attic roof. I don't know. Get him out because absolutely not. No way. No way. If something hurts you, 
it hurts you. And that's valid in itself that it should stop, you know? Am I the asshole? My mom wants me to pretend my sister is a good person. Family problem, okay. So my sister lived with me and or my parents with my financial support for many years in exchange for her agreement to help care for my elderly parents who also live with me but are financially self-supportive. Then she had weight loss surgery and got a boyfriend and moved away with him. Okay, <laughs> bye. My 92 year old mom recently visited my sister and really wants me to accept her choices and move on. The fact is that I have moved on, love caring for my mom, dad died last year, so sorry about that, but won't pretend to be happy about the carefree life my sister now enjoys, living on the road as work campers. I'm glad she has found her equally financially irresponsible soulmate, and I really do hope they will be happy, but I'm not an idiot, and I know the odds are high that they will eventually hit my mom up for money since she surely knows that my well has run dry for her. Am I the asshole for not joining in on the isn't it wonderful how happy they are bandwagon when she reneged on her written clearly articulated agreement to stay and help with the parents. Her carefree traveler lifestyle significantly impedes my opportunity to travel and enjoy my well-earned retirement. Something she will never have since she's never worked. What the fuck? Is it me and I just can't see it? I want everybody to be happy but I don't want to be walked on and then asked to smile about it. Okay, I don't know if this is your experience but I feel like in a lot of situations situations where there is parents or a family member that needs to be taken care of, there's always kind of one person that the responsibilities fall on. And maybe that doesn't always happen immediately, but over time it's kind of like everybody else conveniently is unable to do what you do to the extent that you do to help take care of people that you didn't sign up to take care of. So to not have support with that is already frustrating in itself, I'm sure. And to add on, this person has never worked, doesn't, you know, help out, doesn't have money, doesn't seem to really be self-sufficient and leans on everybody else for help. And when you're already giving so much to help your parents, having somebody on the side who's also just sucking from you and taking bit by bit here and there and not giving back or doing anything to reciprocate that level of reliance on somebody, it's like, what the fuck? Like, what do you think I am? I'm not a personal bank. I'm not gonna sit here and just write you a check so you and your husband can go play with lions in Africa, you know? And I'm gonna sit back here and not get to do anything I wanna do and have to support you? There's kind of two ways I guess you can look at this. Both ways are justified and I think, you know, one way is you can look at this and say, I'm gonna forget all about it. This is my family. I'm gonna just love my sister for who she is and at least she's having the best life she can have. But on the other hand, they are happy for their sister from a distance, has no ill will, although they do seem like there is a bit of resentment there, understandably so. They've put up a boundary and they've said, I don't want her in my life. I don't want to be in her life. And that's kind of is what it is. And I think that that's fair, even though it sucks because when people in your family don't get along or when you're kind of in the middle and you feel like you want to be able to patch something because you understand both sides or, you know, you know, it's something stupid that they're fighting over, but you know, ultimately that's not anybody's responsibility, especially not the parents to try and convince anybody to get along. Considering the parents are 92 and this person's talking about their retirement, I would imagine they're like <laughs> in their sixties. So this, sounds like it's been a long time that they've been dealing with this and at a certain point you kind of just have to accept that people aren't going to get along and you know sometimes siblings just don't get along sometimes people grow up and they turn into different people and it's really sad to kind of watch that person or that part of your life no longer fulfill that role that they once used to but that's kind of just life and reality there's no rule out there that says that you have to support your sister you have to be best friends with your brother call your mom this many times a year. Like your relationship with your family is what you make of it. You know, I think when we're younger, it's just easy because we're being taken care of. We kind of just rely on other people to tell us what to do and how to feel and walk us through life. And it's just so easy to love for most people. Um, I know not everybody grows up in a loving home and that's not fair. Um, as you age out of that and you get older, it's it all of a sudden becomes harder to love so blindly and just so carefree. You know, when it comes to family, it should be unconditional, but 
it's not because there are sometimes things that happen. There's not safe people that could be in your family and then that could fall under the umbrella of many different things. There's people who just take advantage and you know, go off and live this life while you're not able. I don't think you're the asshole. I think this is just a really shitty situation, but I think the sooner everybody just kind of accepts that this is where we're at and this is probably how it's going to go unless something big happens where my sister makes this significant change, maybe then there's always room to salvage that. And I think the door should always be left open unless of course there is a good reason to close it. In this case, you know, I feel like the door is open, but you're not allowed inside. <laughs> I can see you, we can talk, we can, you know, have a little eh here and there, but you're not coming into my house. You are not taking from me. And I don't see anything wrong with that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said every single one of those people were not assholes. So I don't know if you would agree with me on that one. I wasn't expecting that outcome, but let me know what your thoughts are on any of these situations. And if you have any am I the asshole story, any rant or any silly videos that you want me to react to, make sure you tag me in them on Instagram, TikTok, or you can send me an email. And just a friendly reminder, I am not on Facebook. There has been a account specifically that's been a problem for a while now. One of the bigger accounts that that is and they were posting either were hacked or they were posting some explicit photos not of me like just random women with links to you know keep an eye out for that shit I know that this is happening with a lot of creators on Facebook so if you're following any creators on Facebook just be very aware uh, that might possibly not be them yay if you're a lawyer please help me because I'm losing my mind all right you guys I appreciate you for being here and I will see you next time bye <laughs>